team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Today we're going to be looking at one of the open response questions that's posted online on the General Curriculum Math Practice Test. This is going to be part of three videos on open response. The first one is going to be focusing on solving the problem. The second one is going to be focusing on what your mission is on these open response questions. And we're going to look at, you know, what they're looking for on their rubric of each one of the things that you want to, you know, make sure that you answer. And the final um, video is going to be on looking at some of the samples that they provide online and pointing out, you know, the really good things about it. But let's first, let's first focus on understanding the question. Because if you don't understand a, this question, it's really hard to uh, critique a student's work. Students are asked to solve the following problem. And they give this right here, this diagram. Then it says, approximately what fraction of the entire figure shown above is enclosed by the semicircle? It tells us what pi is. Take in all the information. Look at the language of the question. Okay, now I want to, in your taking in the information, I'm hoping that you noticed we have these, uh, this shape. But when thinking about this shape, I want you to think about what you actually see. For example, there's a triangle, a rectangle, and a semicircle. You should see that right away and click off right away that this is a geometry question. That's Part of it is going to involve geometric shapes. Um, there's another thing that you should see right, uh, right away. What fraction? When you see fraction, I want you to automatically start thinking of a part to whole question. We're going to be comparing a part to a whole. And then it tells us the entire figure showed above is in what part of the entire figure is shown by the semicircle. When you're thinking about part to whole, the entire figure shown above, this would represent your whole. If you're thinking about the part, that's the enclosed part, the semicircle. So when I, when I go back to think about this, I want to think about this, the entire figure, as my whole. That means the semicircle, rectangle, and triangle is my whole, and my part is the semicircle. That's the part that's represented by, by this right here. So if we just take, you know, um, a very basic, under, we want to understand this problem, so I'm going to just say, you know, what is my part to whole relationship? Well, my part is represented by the semicircle, and my whole is going to be what's represented by these portions here. Oops. The adding up of these right here is going to equal my whole, and this is going to be my part. In order to find these different parts, you got to use the area formulas for each one and find the area of this shape here. You got to find the area of this, that way you'll know that, and then you got to find the area of the rectangle and the triangle. And I don't think that's too hard to do, but that means that you have to recall, you know, each one of your area formulas to help you out. So let's start, let's start with a semicircle. Ask yourself, what is the formula for a semicircle? Well, a semicircle is really half of a circle. Sorry, my drawing's not that good, but think about it in terms of a full circle. What would be the area of a full circle? A full circle. Wouldn't that be pi r squared? But we're only dealing with half of one, so the formula is half of the area of a circle, or half of pi r squared. So that's going to be the same formula for this one down here, half of the area of pi r squared. And the r, the r represents the radius. So in this case right here, the radius, it tells us, is represented by 3. And I want you to right away think the radius is 3. This is a radius is any line, any line that goes from the center to the edge. So if this is 3, this is 3, this is 3, this is also 3. So that radius is going to help us find other measurements that are missing too. All right, our go to our rectangle. Our rectangle is a little bit more direct. It's length times width. You can think base times height. Let's stick with length times width for the moment. And then finally, let's go on to our triangle. 
A triangle is one half base times height. Using these formulas, if I uh, shift my screen over a little bit, we could find out the areas of each one of these shapes. And you'd have to go in, I don't think we're going to have time for this uh, video necessarily to go in and do all the calculations, but I'm going to be substituting in real quickly for that radius, I'm going to do one half pi times, you know, my radius is 3 squared, so that would get me one half times 9 times pi. Uh, it doesn't matter, because these are connected by multiplication, I can switch the order. And the reason why I'd want to do that is so I can get something like 4.5 times pi. Now I'm going to find a scrap sheet of paper and I'm going to actually do that out, you know, 3.14 times 4.5. When I do that out all correctly, because of space, I'm just going to shoot in the answer. It's going to be 14.13. Uh, so approximately, if I'm just thinking approximately now, it's approximately 14. This is approximately 14, this piece. Now, if I'm looking at the square, it's length times width. Well, I already know one of the measurements is 3. So let's call that let's call that length 3. What's this one? Well, it's twice the radius, so that'd be 6. So length times width here would be, you know, 3 times 6 or 18. Well, that's helpful. And then the triangle is 1 half base times height. Now, I already know that the base is 6 because that's the same as the the width of the rectangle. What's the height? It doesn't tell us the height, but I know that it's this is whole things 10, so this is 3, 3, this has got to be 4. So it's 1 half of uh, 4 times 6, so that would be 24. Half of that would be 12. Now let's uh, push this out a bit, move this over to the side just for a moment. Now that I have these measurements, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to think about what, what is my part and what is my whole. So let's just clear out some of this work for a moment. Clear out a little bit more. A little bit more. If I'm thinking about this in terms of part to whole and I, I add up all my parts, this shape is going to have a combined area of 44, approximately. And this one's going to have a combined area of 14. So 14 over 44, sure, it could be reduced. It could be reduced to, I don't know, 7 over 22. Now, what? remember, it says approximately. And I always want to go back to my core fractions. What is that approximately? I think it's fair to say, if we just made one little edit, we turn this 22 to 21, it would be 7 over 21, and I think that's pretty fair to say this is the closest to 1 third. So when I go into my answer, I'm going to make sure I say approximately what? 1 third of the entire figure shown above is enclosed by the semicircle. 